Okay, the title of this sermon is A Fight Worth Fighting. It's a recycled sermon. I do that sometimes if I don't get inspiration for a new one. And it's from Jude chapter 1 verse 3 where it says, Dear friends, although I was very eager to write to you about the salvation we share, I felt compelled to write and urge you to contend for the faith that was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Would you bow your heads with me? Dear Lord, we thank you this morning as we have gathered in your name that we expect the power of God to be here with us today, Lord, that you are here moving among us. We thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for that we have access to your word, and we ask you to bless these morsels of it to our spirits. In Jesus' name, amen. So this is about contending. I preached a sermon once before on this verse, but it wasn't this sermon. But to contend, the definition means to use without object, uh, to struggle in opposition. So like to contend with the enemy for control of the port or to strive in rivalry, uh, to compete, to contend for first prize, to strive in a debate, to dispute earnestly, to contend against falsehood. So we are all expected to be contenders for the faith, contending for the faith. Jude, the author, was one of the brothers of Jesus. James was another one. I don't know if we, he had brothers and he had sisters too. The book is very short. Verse 3 begins with an eagerness about salvation, about shared salvation. I was eager to write to you about the salvation we share. So James expresses an affection, dear brothers. He is writing to fellow believers the bond of affection uh, that he has for them is based on the shared salvation. You know, if you, if, when you share salvation, you share an eternal victory, and you have a bond of fellowship with other people who have that same faith. When we accept Christ, the Holy Spirit takes up residence in us, and the love of God flows through us, and we have that bond of affection with others of like precious faith. Many times you can meet a stranger, and you can just sense that they're believers. You can meet a stranger, and you just kind of can tell. You can just sense. We share salvation. We share the miracle of our own rebirth. Then the tone changes. James feels compelled. He is driven with a message. When the Holy Spirit compels you to do something, you can't rest until it's accomplished. What he needs to share is urgent. He says he's compelled to urge you. It's urgent. This was at the moment something extreme sometimes god calls us to do something sometimes he calls us just to say something in jude's case he was called to write something sometimes he calls us to go somewhere to speak something to somebody Sometimes he calls us to give something, to give money to somebody that you don't even, you don't even know them. Sometimes God urges us to help people. Sometimes someone in need crosses our path. It's not an accident. God sets up situations 
and you can carry what people need. It can be the light of the gospel. Everybody needs that. People who are in dark places desperately need the gospel light. They are bound for destruction. They are desperate. And you might be a person that can help. God compels you to help. Sometimes they just need a good word. Sometimes people just need encouragement. Sometimes they need to get saved. Sometimes they're already saved. They just need some an encouragement, a pat on the back. You can be instrumental and get someone off the path that leads to destruction. There's nothing more thrilling than to partner with the Holy Spirit in blessing someone. Just blessing someone. Just for an example, and I think I've mentioned this before, but I have a good friend, and he has a store, and I was leaving his store at the door, and he said to me, he said, I know I won't be in heaven. What would you do if somebody says that to you? I said, say that again? He said, I know I won't be in heaven. I said, I said why? Why? would you say that? And he said, because I've done things that God can't forgive. I said, you can't do that. You can't decide what God forgives. Anyway, I led him out of that. Became a pretty good friend. What was, uh, what was the writer urging them what he was urging them to do was to contend for the faith. Specifically, the faith that, in his words, was once for all entrusted to God's holy people. Look around and tell me who's God's holy people. We are. <laughs> The faith is entrusted to us believers, but it is for all who will believe. We are charged to share the faith. There will be contention. We're urged to contend for the faith. The contention that Jude was writing about was something that was going on in the church. <clears throat> the heresy was creeping in to the church called antinomianism. <clears throat> There were false teachers who were teaching that salvation by grace allowed them to sin freely without consequences. There are still people around who believe that. That's a heresy. Once you get saved, you have to try to be holy. We're not holy. But we have the invitation of the righteousness of Christ put on us. And we have to be constantly moving toward God and away from the world. Not sinking into the world because we have accepted Christ as Savior. That's an insult to God. So in verse, in chapter number one and verse four, it says, For certain individuals whose condemnation was written about long ago have secretly slipped in among you. They are ungodly people who pervert the grace of our God into a license for immorality and deny Jesus Christ our only sovereign and Lord. This teaching was a threat to the church. Jude urged, urged the dear friends, the holy people, what he called, to contend for the faith. The faith is the gospel proclaimed by Christ and the apostles. It is the fixed and unalterable truth given by the Holy Spirit and empowered in Scripture. The faith that we are to contend for is precious. It is worth contending for. Contention is a struggle. Struggle means opposition. We have an enemy. 
The enemy doesn't want us to succeed. The enemy is relentless. He tries to stop and undo what we do for God. 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He wants to destroy any work of God that comes to and through your life. We have to contend against that. The enemy doesn't want you to help anyone. The enemy doesn't want you to carry the light of the gospel. The apostles were all murdered, except for John. They contended for the faith. They struggled. The world would say that they lost because they were murdered. But they changed the world, and when they were done, then they moved in with God. That's the victory. The Apostle Paul, before his conversion, persecuted the church, did the best he could to destroy the church and the message about Jesus. After his conversion, he had to contend for the faith for the rest of his life. He had to be in struggle and contention. There was no end to his struggles. And he was also murdered for his faith. But he was responsible for starting Gentile churches and thousands of people came to Christ through his ministry. The early church faced persecution 10 times between Nero and Diocletian. There were 10 different persecutions. Hundreds. Probably thousands were murdered, killed in most gruesome ways. We're going to see them when we move in with God. If we're contending for the faith, the struggle never ends. The good news is that we don't have to do it alone. Deuteronomy 31 8 the Lord himself goes before you and will be with you he will never leave you nor forsake you do not be afraid and do not be discouraged we also have each other that's why there's a church we have power in numbers we can do far more together than alone we strengthen each other we teach each other we help each other. We pray for each other. We contend together. I've said before, I know what's wrong with all of you. <laughs> I know where it hurts. I know where your challenges are, except for the young ones. This one, she, she, I pray for her, uh, just for God to, to just protect her, and keep her safe. Because she has to go to Brookville a couple of times a week. I just pray for her, but nothing hurts. So I don't. So I, that's what I pray for her, and those two youngsters in the back. I pray for them because nothing hurts. So I just pray for God's protection and blessing. But the rest of you, I know where it hurts. <laughs> so that's the way I pray. But the good news is that we will have the power to overcome what we are contending against. In Luke 24, starting with verse 45 to 49, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written, the Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are, to, you are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. We have direction. Contend for the faith. We have the word. We have empowerment by the Holy Spirit. We have each other. The enemy doesn't have a chance if we stay in contention for the faith. 
Stay in the Word. Stay in the Word. It's our nourishment. Stay in prayer. Be connected to God in prayer. And stay in fellowship with other believers. Stay in church. Bring people. There's people that need to hear the gospel. Bring sinners. <laughs> came in here as a sinner and she accepted Christ Amen. her daughter came in as a sinner her daughter's going to get baptized I don't know if Bert's going to do that is Bert going to do it well I hope she does but that little girl nine years old Asked Jesus to be her Lord and Savior sitting right on that seat over there. And so did her mother, I think, on the same seat, but the following week. We're going to baptize that little girl. It's a shame that she would be, that her mother wouldn't come and be baptized with her. That's a shame. But she's going to do that. She's going to do it. And if she's the only one, good for her. That's what I say. Good for her. So here's the closing. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 For though we live in the world, we do not wage war as the world does. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. That's our contending. The weapons are not physical, but they have divine power to pull down strongholds. When someone receives Christ as Savior, a stronghold comes down. I can remember in my own, I was a stronghold. God used other people to, to help me through that. God is so good. <laughs> so good. I mean, it's just, it's just so amazing that the devil can have such a grip on you. And God can open your heart and pull down that veil and the gospel come becomes real to you and you accept him as Lord and Savior and live for God from then on. That's just so amazing. Yeah. So awesome. So wonderful. That's why we get together and praise and worship him. It's just amazing. Amazing, amazing. So that's our wonderful God. That's our challenge is to contend for the faith. Contention means there's a struggle. But God is on our side because we're struggling against darkness and he is the light. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. It's only 1139. Got plenty of time to get to the restaurant before the rest of the believers do. <laughs> Lord, it's been good to be in your house today and it's been good to be fed by you, Lord. We take the challenge to be contending for the faith, Lord, because it's important. The faith is the only way people can ever escape from the powers of darkness. And it's freely available to all who we'll open their hearts, Lord, and accept it. So help us to be the contenders, Lord. We accept that challenge. In Jesus' name, amen. All right.